Yeah. Okay. Today's class is going to be uh, a war. No, excuse me. A uh, half moon, half moon flow, which is um, kind of like a whole body experience. It's open chest. It's open hips, open hamstrings. It's core because it's balance. Um, it's it's focus for the mind. Oops. Yeah, we got one more coming in. Okay, so uh, suggested props, uh, a strap and a block, but don't, you know, just get creative and it's not required. So when you're comfortable, close the eyes. If that's okay, you can keep the eyes open. With the eyes closed, you're able just to focus more internally and balance comes from an internal gauge. So soften the eyes. Maybe this is the first time today that you've really allowed yourself to take a break without electronics, without uh, external distractions. So tuning in now to your breath. And observing the space between the breaths. So awareness arises in us in the space between the breaths. So when you can weave one breath into the next until you uh, begin to sense your breaths flow in an unbroken stream, not hurried, not forceful, but relaxed. So focusing on the space between the rise and the space between the fall of the breath. And if you feel tightness in the chest or tightness in the belly, just bring your awareness to places that are relaxed, like the hands and the feet. Awareness between the space of the breath. And slowly blink the eyes to open, stay relaxed. Just change the cross of the legs. If you're sitting cross leg, have the opposite leg forward and interlace the fingers, press the palms forward and then to your own degree and it, it might not be very high, elevate the arms. And then when you feel like you found that space where you can pause and take a few breaths, enjoy working the floating ribs into the back spine. So firming in through the upper abdominal wall and then drawing long through the arms using the triceps to help extend the elbows. Take one more breath. On the exhale, let the arms float down. Good. One more time. Interlace so the opposite index finger is leading. Reverse the palms. You could stay right here. This is more than enough for most people. Or elevate. Try to relax through the neck. Relax the traps, relax the shoulders down, and then focusing on the lower rib cage, drawing in. Good. 
Good. Release hands down. And then finding all fours, tabletop position, hands and knees. So one of the things with the home practice is that you guys have the freedom. Um, you have a lot of freedom. And so you can modify and change any position that we take. And another oh, cat and cow, sorry. Another fun thing to do with a home practice like this is that you can play whatever music you like. I leave that up to you guys. No music is also like a form of music. So we're going to do a lot of different um, core strengthening exercises through the first half of class. And the primary purpose of that is to help us when we take Half Moon, Arda Tendrasin. Um, it's a huge stabilizing posture for the spine uh, to stay long through the torso. So in this movement here, we're just getting an introduction to our uh, four sides of our torso. So focus on how this movement feels on the side of the body, the front of the body, and the back of the body. Good, one more round, cat, cow. And then a neutral tabletop position. Let's get into the adductors. Please extend the right leg to the right. Place the right foot flat and have the arch of the right foot in line with the left knee. And then a few times, see what it feels like to draw the hips back and forward. So before we take just a mild rotation of the spine, start to feel into the inside, the inner right thigh. The more you can press down and ground the right foot with the toes spread but relaxed. And if you have very open hips, um, you might have to go very far back towards the back foot to feel sensation. If you have very tight adductors, you don't have to go far. One more time, back and forward. And then keep the foot as it is. Let's reach the left arm up, inhale. And a very easy twist, a rotation. Come to the left deltoid, maybe rest the head on the mat. And then you can tent up the right fingertips just above the head and maybe look under the right armpit for three. Stay uh, really firmly planted in the right foot for two. Good, return the right hand somewhere solid, press into it, lift the left arm, inhale. And left hand down to earth, switch sides please. Right knee. Uh, Beneath right hip, left foot to the left. Have the arch of the left foot in line with the right knee and a few times on your own with a strong braced core, drawing the hips back, feeling into the inner left leg. Feel the, the blade, the pinky toe side of the left foot and try to, from the outer hip, lengthen the left leg down towards the blade of the left foot. So that's gonna naturally engage the left arch to create strength for the muscles of the foot. One more time, go back and forward, good. So this is a simple twist. Left hand beneath the face, right arm up, inhale, and then threading beneath and coming into your twist. Keep sending awareness through the outer leg, through the left arch. One more breath. Good, return left hand somewhere, press into it, lift right arm and right hand to earth. Good, left knee draws back and let's take down dog. Walk the hands forward, tuck the toes, 
and lift the hips up and back. Spreading through the feet, spreading through the toes as you bicycle side to side. <clears throat> Warrior, what do I keep saying that? Half moon is a deep expression of open hamstrings. So as you bend with the opposite leg, lift the sit bone up and press the heel down. So you can imagine <clears throat> like two endpoints. One is the heel, one is the sit bone. And you're trying to create lots of space between those two points by firming the thigh. As you lift the sit bone one more time, you side, side, side. Very good. Okay, forward please, high plank pose and take it easy, knees, chest, chin, and lower. Good, slide the hands back in line with the ribs, elbows firming in, gazes down, tops of the feet are flat. Lift the chest and now lift the hands. Let's hold here for three. Good, so proud chest forward, hands drawing back, elbows drawing in for two. Good, lower, interlace hands behind the head. Take an inhale, on the exhale, lift. Elbows wide, chest forward for three, press the feet down. Use that to help lift more for two. Good, return hands alongside ribs, press to knees, down dog, pressing back. Bicycle again. So coming into the hamstrings, the feet, even the Achilles tendon. So feeling the back of the calf. Very good. Okay, one more time, please. High plank pose. Let's get warm through the back and lower. Slide the hands back in line with the ribs and then lift chest, lift hands. Keep the elbows bent and the wrists flexed for three. Good, soften the shoulders down for two. Lower, interlace hands behind head. Pressing into the hands, lift the head, elbows wide for three. For two, good, return hands to mat, press to knees or straight to plank and down dog, pressing back. Now we're gonna do some sun salutations to invite some rhythm and a nice cadence, a good pace. So walk the feet forward, take your time, unhurried. Once you arrive, maybe knees are bent, halfway lift and then softly fold, relax the face. Good, pressing down into your feet, reach up and rise in breath. Hands to prayer. Okay, Surya C. Inhale, reaching up, soft gaze, soft brow. Exhale, swan dive, belly in and fold. Pulling forward, halfway lift. And then stepping the left foot back very far on the exhale. Maybe fingertips only, tented up hands to create length for the uh, chest. Inhale, hips down, heart up. Down dog, pressing and lifting. Inhale to plank pose, coming forward. Exhale to lower. Good. Now listen carefully, like we did before. Inhale, lift chest, lift hands. Exhale, lower. Interlace fingers behind head. Inhale, lift elbows, push head against hands. Good, lower. Pressing into hands to knees or straight to plank and down dog. Left leg rises, inhale. And then stepping the left foot forward strongly through the low belly, lift. Pause for your in-breath. And step forward, exhale. Halfway lift, inhale, and fold. Pressing down into your feet, let's rise, inhale. Hands to prayer. Okay, again, inhale. Long, exhale. Half lift, inhale. Right foot back, very far back, exhale. Pause for the in-breath, sink into the hips. And now press down, down dog, exhale. 
High plank pose, inhale, and all the way to the earth, exhale. Slide the hands back, lift the palms, lift the chest, inhale. Good, lower, interlace fingers behind head, exhale. In breath, lift. Out breath, lower. Good, inhale to plank, exhale to dog. Inhale, the right leg rises. And then exhale, right foot forward. Pause for the in-breath. And step on the out-breath. Halfway lift, in-breath. And fold, exhale. To rise, let's reach, inhale. Hands to prayer. Okay. Inhale, reach up, interlace fingers. You can interlace all fingers except index fingers coming into this mudra. I don't know what it means. <laughs> Draw the arm bones back and now drop over to the left side. So pressing down into the right foot and lengthening through the upper right armpit area. So creating space in the waist and the ribs, but using the core to help you go more to the left for three. Strong legs, like you're squeezing a block with the inner thighs for two. Good, upright your chest, upright your torso. Inhale, maybe look up, go up. And then exhale back to center, keep the arms. Going to the right, so stretching, lengthening, opening into the left side. So pressing down into the left foot, squeeze the inner thighs, and now reach away, left armpit away from left hip for three, for two. Good, back to center, inhale, look up. Swan dive, fold, bend the knees, perhaps exhale. Lengthen, unhurried, in breath, pull the spine forward. Left foot back, returning to low runner's lunge, exhale. Fingertips stay down, heart lifts, hips sink. Good, down dog, pressing back, exhale. So we're gonna start to weave in some core. Come forward, please, inhale, and coming to forearms. Okay, we have 10 of these on each side. Uh, you can hold just a side plank or you can do what we're about to do. So turn the left forearm to the left, to the right, <laughs> to the right. <clears throat> so side plank on your left forearm. You can stay here. We're gonna lower and lift for 10, nine, eight, hips up, seven, six, five, four, three, two, hold it up top. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good, forearm plank, hallelujah. Pause in forearm plank, lengthen tailbone down. So pull the low belly up and now switch sides. Right forearm turns to left and stacked feet. You can stay static or dynamic would be inhaling lift hips and lower. Good, lower, that's nine. Eight, seven, really lift. Six, five, four, three, two, last one. Hold at the top, hold higher. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, forearm plank. Good. Lower the knees, sphinx pose. Ah, congratulate yourselves here. And sphinx pose, press feet down, pull heart forward, blink the eyes. Slide hands back, pressing to knees or straight to plank, down dog. Left leg rises, in breath. Left foot forward, out breath. Pause here with me, inhale. And stepping forward, exhale. Cool, half lift, inhale, and fold, exhale. Press down, feel your feet rise in breath. Hands to prayer. Okay, feet hip width, 
interlace. This is where you might need a strap if you have tighter shoulders, which is fine. That's why you're here. So we're gonna take the arms up and over. And so if you can't interlace, find a strap. I like to bend the knees deeply and focus on the arms. And then slowly I'll extend the legs to straight. So ringing out the upper back, relaxing the forehead. You can blink the eyes, act as if you're chewing food. So the jaw has movement and then relax it. If it feels okay, keep the right knee bent, extend the left leg to straight, and dial to the right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good, switch directions, bend the opposite knee, extend the opposite leg, dial to the opposite direction. Back to center, hands to shins, inhale, Good, right foot back, step back, pause with me, low runner's lunge, inhale, down dog, exhale. High plank pose, inhale, good. Come to the knees and set it up, put your block or whatever water bottle, something in front of you, <clears throat> about arms, arms length from where you're gonna be doing plank pose. So if I was right here, I'd be too close. So find a nice arm's length and then take plank pose with me. You can do this with your knees down, but you see how I'm coming into like this real hollow back. We hate that. So tuck the tailbone, embrace your core and keep it strong, okay? All right, 10 taps, 10 taps. So tap, but you can take your feet wide. Don't let your hips move for 10, nine, eight. Think about how good your half moon is gonna be. Seven, six, no salsa in the hips, solid hips. Five, four, three, two, one. Good, knees down. Ah, sphinx pose. You can keep your feet wide in this sphinx pose. So when you do anything like this, um, up dog, or any uh, sphinx variation, a wider leg stance can release the low back. So if you ever do back bending and you feel pain in the low back, your legs might be too narrow. Good, return hands back in line with ribs. One swoop, plank pose, elbows stay in, and you go back, good. Right leg rises, inhale, and right foot forward, exhale. Pause for the inhale, simple lunge, and step forward, exhale. Hands to shins, inhale, and fold, exhale. To rise, let's reach in breath. Hands to prayer. Okay, so we're gonna work eagle as our first balancing posture, but more importantly, as a shoulder opener. If you need some extra care, you'll place the block to the outside of the right ankle as a kickstand for your eagle. It's not necessary. Okay, so the right foot stays down, cross left thigh. Right arm is over, left arm is under. Pull the shoulders down, lift the fingertips up. If you want more heat, let's fold elbow to knee. Lift 
lift, lift. Keep the arms, come to stand. Inhale, maybe back bend, lift the forearms, lift the chest. As you exhale, release arms and fold. Halfway lift, inhale. Good, left foot back, exhale. Pause here, pull the spine forward, low runner's lunge. Palms down, exhale, stepping back. High plank pose coming forward and then slowly lowering two forearms. Okay, round, what is this? Three. So you'll stay in forearm plank, round the spine, the upper back, I mean, tuck tailbone. If you can keep all this steady, we're gonna go for a walk. And so you're gonna bend one knee just to a light touch or to a hover, but don't let your hips really change shape and then alternate. So going left to right, but the slower, the better, because you can really keep lengthening the tailbone downward, keep scooping the frontal hip points upward, rounding into the shoulder blades. Let's go for 10. Use this as a really strong strengthening posture for the breath as you exhale. Nine. Eight. Press uh, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Knees down. Ah, Sphinx pose. Pulling spine forward, softening into the breath. Slip hands back, down dog, however you get there. And the left leg rises, inhale, left foot lunges forward, exhale, pause with me, inhale, stepping forward, exhale, hands to shins, pulling forward, inhale, good, touch the earth, exhale, strong back, inhale, reaching up, firm the belly, hands to prayer, Okay, eagle on the left side. So block option would be next to the left ankle. Left arm is over. If you want more heat, coming forward. Slowly lifting upward. Keep the arms, come to stand. Inhale, reach forearms up, sternum up. Release hands and fold, exhale. Halfway lift, inhale, and we're gonna step the right foot back. Exhale, inhale, low runner's lunge. Exhale, downward facing dog. Rolling forward, high plank pose, and uno mas, forearm plank. Good, we're gonna do dolphin push-ups. So walking the feet forward, dolphin pose. You can stay here. I interlace fingers and push down into the wrists. So I'm trying to lift the pinky fingers off of the mat. I'll do that. And then <clears throat> I'll push the pinky fingers down and I wanna find middle ground. So I'm not lifting and I'm not pressing, but I'm doing both kind of simultaneously. And I'm pressing the forearms down. My heart, my chest is trying to lift up and towards the thighs gazing towards the knees or the ankles. Good, coming forward, try to touch your chin in front of your hands and press back and up. Hallelujah, let's do five. Coming forward, 
and backward. Good, forward and back. You got two more. Forward and back. You got one more. Forward and back. Dolphin pose for three. Press down for two. Good, knees down. Ah, come to sit on the shins. Draw back. Interlace fingers behind you. I round and then I unfurl. If you want your strap, have your strap. Take the hands to the right waist. Hug the right elbow in. And then gently take the right ear to the right shoulder. And then play with the orientation of your chin so you can feel where you need to feel a stretch. Good, release, chin to chest. Hands behind, reach up, inhale. Interlace the funny way behind the back so the opposite your next finger is leading. I round and then I unfurl. Hands to the left side waist, hug the left elbow in, press the left hand forward, and then left ear, left shoulder. It's subtle. Good, chin to chest, hands behind you, hands above you, hands to prayer. Okay, uh, stepping the right foot forward, finding a, a lunge, Anjane Asan. Pushing the back of the pelvic plate, plate forward and then lifting the front of the pelvic bowl upward. Good, reach the left arm up. And now reach to the right, but keep pushing gently forward, lifting pelvic bowl upward. That's where the work is. And as you reach the left arm away from the left knee, I want you to lift the pelvic bowl. Maybe he's pushing the back of the plate forward. One more in breath. Good. Catch the left elbow to the outside of the right thigh, please. And then you can use the right hand to help rotate or hands can come into prayer. This is gonna help open the upper back. Please stay with the back knee down or lift the back knee coming into a twist. So twisting is so healthy for the internal organs. So as you exhale, just gently draw the low belly in away from the right thigh. Soften the face. There's no need for tension in the face. Good, hands to earth, low runner's lunge. We've been here before. And now prasarita, turn to the left side of your mat. You really have to open hamstrings for half moon. So walking either the hands forward into a Y-legged down dog, drawing the hips back, using the texture of your palms to hold your hands in place as you draw the hips back from the thighs. Lift the sit bones away from the heels for three. Breathing into the upper back, breathing into the side ribs for two. Good, slowly walk the hands beneath the shoulders, turn the feet out, heels in, skandasin, side to side. Okay, so this is, this is it. This is the test. From here, keep moving side to side. We're going to plant the right foot eventually, and then using the left leg as, I don't want to say a cat catapult, but using the left leg to help us propel into half moon. 
So it's a very fun, playful way to get into half moon. You can start to shorten your stance as you go side to side, maybe walking the feet just a little closer. And then when you're ready, right foot goes forward and you press into your half moon. And you should feel pretty stable through your center, through your core. Good. Fill out. So pressing back strongly through the left leg, reaching up through the left arm. Stay here. Test your balance. Bend the left knee, hand to foot. Arda Chandra Chapasan. Extend half moon and a soft landing warrior two. Whoa, good. Let's meet in warrior two. Reverse this in breath. Extended side angle. Stay in the right thigh. Stay in the right leg. Reverse trikonasin. Firm the right leg. Reaching away, hand away from foot. And now hand forward towards the foot, to the ankle, to the earth, or to a block. Triangle pose. Good, low runner's lunge, pivot, step back, plank pose, and push to knees, untuck toes, come to sit on shins, interlace hands <clears throat> in front of you, press palms forward, elevate. Triceps engaged. Shoulder blades drawing down. The traps are relaxed. Good. Release the arms. Interlace the funny way. Pressing hands forward. Reach the arms up one more time. So draw the floating ribs down, lift the upper belly up. And then from there, you're gonna get a deeper stretch for the armpit chest. Relax the traps, relax the upper back for three. By relax, I mean draw them down. It's still semi-active for two. Good, hands down. Ah, forearms might be warm, that's good. Stepping the left foot forward, take on Janae. Awesome. Reaching the arms up, inhale. Back of the pelvic bowl presses forward. Front rim of the pelvic bowl lifts upward. Left hand to the left hip, reaching the right arm up and over to the left. So really creating your own stretch here, your own length by activating your core, the glutes, and then stretching hand away from knee. Good, keep this length. Take the elbow to the outside of the thigh. You can stay or palms come to prayer. Working the rotation, working the breath, you can tuck the back toes and lift the knee or stay with the knee down. Pulling the shoulder blades down, almost thinking like cobra or up dog in your chest for three, two, low runner's lunge, unwind slowly, prasarita, padottanasana, turn to the right side of your mat, parallel feet, and then either 
a wide-legged down dog, which I enjoy, or arms of choice. You guys are in the home stretch. So after this little sequence here of the Skandasin half moon, we'll hit the floor. So just give your belly and quads here a little activation. Don't tap out yet. So stay strong through the legs, grounding through the outer edges of the feet, lifting through the sit bones, and then pulling the hips back, but your fingers are preventing your hands from slipping. Good, walk the hands beneath the shoulders, turn the feet out, heels in, skandasin. So your skandasin can be pretty high. It can be uh, more like a, just like a side to side squat, or it can be a lower, super low uh, skandasin, depending on, of course, your body. So as I'm going side to side, I'm slowly inching my back foot just a little closer to the front foot. And that's gonna help me get that lift, that push when we're about to take off into half moon. Not yet though. Okay, so when you're ready, You'll turn the left toes forward to 12 o'clock. You'll push on the right foot. Good guys, take flight. If you can reach the top arm. Sarah the cat looks very impressed right now with you. Firm the left thigh if you would like to bend the top knee, catch the hand to the foot, stretch the chest, the quad, the belly. No slingshot, half moon, warrior two, soft landing, rise. Inhale, reverse, exhale, extend. Good, inhale, reverse trikonasin, firm the front leg. Triangle pose, we'll stay for a few breaths, enjoy. And low runner's lunge, bend, pivot. Listen carefully. Step the right foot forward, lower onto your seat, all the way down, Navasan boat pose. We'll do 10 high to lows, bridge, wheel, and then some pigeon stuff. So this is the one last touch for your core. You can stay like this the whole time. If your feet are down, just try to lift your heels and pull back on the toes. That's gonna to help you lift the chest. If you're with me, start here, or legs to straight, lower. Good, bend knees to chest. One, lower. Bend, two, lower. Bend is three, lower. Bend, four, bend. Five, go is six, lower, bend, seven, bend, Ooh. eight, bend is nine, one more, bend is 10, lower, let's hold. So try to hollow out, so pull the belly in, reaching for the toes, maybe lift the legs, squeeze the inner thighs, and rest. Good work. Okay, bridge pose right away. 
tuck shoulder blades and now lift the hips and stretch out the belly. Walk the shoulder blades beneath you. Walk maybe the shoulder blades closer. Interlace the fingers. Pressing the hands and the arms down. Lift the chest. So this is another great variation with the hands bound to help open and release the front body, the chest, the shoulders. For three, two, release the hands, broaden the upper back and rest. If you can go wide, knees narrow, and just let your breath, let your heart rate just naturally slow. Focus on the space that arises at the end of the inhale and the end of the exhale. Okay, one more back bend of choice. Wheelers, your arms are very, your shoulders are very open. So wheel pose could feel very good. Bridge or wheel or rest, yogi's choice. One more back bend here. So finding hand placement, perhaps pressing down to lift up. Good, stay for three, stay for two, and one. Slowly lower, ah, easy does it. And take a moment, you can windshield wiper the knees side to side. Let the belly, let the side belly, let the back all breathe. We have one more core exercise to help us get ready for the weekend. So finding tabletop position on your back. So the knees stack over the hips and the shins are parallel to the floor. Good, press the low back down strongly, interlace the hands behind the head and crunch, lifting up. Now we're gonna do bicycles, but go slow. So draw opposite uh, knee to elbow, extend the opposite leg, side to side. Good. So this is the last core. So you should feel super well into the abdominal wall because we've been working it so strongly this whole hour. So this last little push here, when the muscles are fatigued, is really gonna help build strength. So push through any resistance, any fatigue. Let's go for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, and one. Ooh. Ah, rest. And now let's stretch the belly. Let the legs fall to the left. Twist. You can catch the outside of the right foot with the left hand. If you want to, or just keep your knees bent, but let the belly breathe.
So we're gonna come into just a couple pigeon variations. And so even twisting like this, have your knees if you can, 90 degrees, unless you have the hand to the foot. Because you wanna start to feel that pigeon area. So the outer hip, maybe the glute, the low back. So beneath, beneath the glute um, are your deeper external hip rotators. And so if those start to get tight, um, you know, you definitely can feel it in the low back, the piriformis. So stuff like this, pigeon-like stuff really helps release that. Good. If you have the leg extended, bend the knee. Everybody come back to center. You can roll side to side just with the low back to settle. And then when you're ready, letting the legs fall to the right. You can keep the knees bent or extend the top leg, catching hand to foot. Yeah, so for the rest of class, we're gonna stay reclined on our back. We're not gonna sit up again until the end. So relax into the ground, relax the back, the arms, the head, the jaw and the tongue. If the legs extended, rebend and come back to center. Thread the needle, cross the right ankle to the left thigh. And drawing, maybe with the arms now, drawing the legs towards you, flex the right ankle uh, strongly. And then feel this now maybe towards the inner, inner part of the right hip and glute. You can close the eyes. Focus on the exhale, softening any areas of tightness, of stickiness. Really let the head be heavy. Let the facial features be heavy. The eyes heavy. Okay, keep the shape of your legs. Take the hands to the side. Let the legs fall to the left. Place the right foot flat. Take the left hand to the right ankle. Pull the foot as high up as you can towards the hip. Keep your hand on the ankle. And now using the outer hip muscles, try to guide the right thigh away from you. Reach the right arm overhead. So I'm really engaging like I'm standing on the right foot. And then if you want one more uh, focal point here, with your hand holding the ankle down, try to lift the right foot off the floor. That might turn on some different areas of the outer hip. One more breath here. Stay for your exhale. Good, legs back to center. Uh, right foot to earth. And switching sides, cross the left ankle and recline pigeon. Flex the ankle strongly. Rest the head, the shoulders, the jaw, and the tongue.
and just <clears throat> be a scientist right now. So test the theory. Does awareness arise more easily uh, in the space between the breaths? Does your awareness increase more easily or strongly in the space between each breath? Release the hands and then let the legs fall. Keep the shape if you can. Let the legs come to the right. <clears throat> Take the right hand to the left ankle and then as high as you can pull the foot towards the hip. You're using the right thigh as like a, a guardrail. And then reach the left arm strongly overhead and then let it rest. And then using the outer hip muscles Try to lift the foot off the floor. Use your right hand to keep the foot grounded. And then breathing into the stretch. So it's an active stretch. And just observe what it feels like to be active, to work. Because in just a few moments, <clears throat> In just a few moments, uh, we are going to take Shavasana, which we're going to do the opposite. So really investigate, really explore this idea that you're doing right now of isometrically contracting. So you're trying to lift the foot up, you're trying to push the thigh away, you're stretching away with the left arm, and you're breathing consciously into areas of tightness. One more inhale. Stay for the exhale. Nice. Back to center, unwind, and extend the legs too straight. Take the arms a good wide uh, distance from the body. Walk the shoulder blades under one at a time. Open and close the palms, roll the ankles, and just let the legs flop. And then find a comfortable resting shape for the back of the skull. So maybe tuck the chin or do the opposite, lift the chin, whatever feels most relaxed for the neck. Allow the breath to be natural. Allow the belly to be free to rise and to fall. And if your mind starts to wander away, come back to the space between the breath.
And then for these last few moments, breathing so the whole body is breathing. Placing the left hand to the heart, the right hand to the belly, and then in between the palms and the space between the palms, breathing in contentment. So being content that you did everything that you could and it's done now. And then from there, uh, let gratitude arise for showing up, for working. And then if it feels good, interlace the fingers, press the palms overhead. You can arch the low back, point the tops of the feet, point the toes. And then exhale, knees to chest, round the back. Keep the head down, roll side to side. Picking a side that makes the most sense, roll off and then slowly pressing up to seated, sitting in any comfortable upright position. Hands can rest in the lap or hands can be in Anjali Mudra. So bowing the head to the heart with gratitude and with respect to yourself for the commitment you have to your health and for the commitment that you have uh, to your body. And then on the next in breath, lift the head, open the eyes.